Hello, welcome to DIY is my happy place. I'm Amy and today we're going to be talking all about gnome fur. I love using fur for the beards, sometimes the hair, sometimes on the clothes of gnomes I'm creating. And I wanted to be able to show you how you can do this in a very reasonably priced way. And there are so many different things that you can do. And the way that I do it is I use fur that I picked up from Walmart. It, I have this great big, like, I, I don't even know. It is longer than my arms. And it, it's great big. It's almost like a blanket. And I got this and I love using white. It's almost a creamy white but a lot of times I want to color. So I'm going to show you how to dye your own fur. And also I'm going to teach you the proper way to cut fur so you can get the most out of it. So if you want to learn more about how to dye fur, let's have some fun. Guess what? I've passed the 5,000 subscriber mark. I'm so excited. I can't believe it. And I'm so appreciative to all of you who come and watch me do my DIY tutorials. So as I promised early on, as soon as I hit that 5,000 mark, I'm going to do a live. So tomorrow on Thursday, I'm going to do a live and I'm going to teach how to make a St. Patrick's Day gnome and it will be on at 7 p.m. I live in Omaha, Nebraska, so it'll be my time at 7. So whatever, wherever you are in the world, that come and join me. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. You can ask me any questions that you might have about any of my DIYs, or you can give me ideas for future DIYs that I can do. Whatever it may be, I'd love to see you, love to hear from you. So I'll see you for my first ever live tomorrow night at seven. Okay, let's talk about today. I absolutely can't believe how easy it is to dye your own fur. You don't need to spend all the money getting all the different colors. I actually got some green fur that I ordered. It was so expensive. And once I figured out that I could buy a big piece of fur and dye it so simply, depending on what my whim was, but first, I want to show you how to properly cut fur. You always want to cut from the bottom side. And you don't want to cut all the way through the fur. Absolutely don't do that. Because you want the fur to kind of hang over the edge. And you'll lose some of the goodness of the fur. So you definitely have the back side up. And then just cut and very carefully cut just the fabric on the back of the fur. Not cutting through the hairs. I'm hoping that's making sense. And I like to cut it into little pieces because I'm only cutting about enough to do two gnomes because after I make two gnomes in one color, I might want the other ones in a different color. So this little piece right here is what I'm going to make into orange fur. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do while I'm dying, I'm going to go ahead and get some of my big, fat, bulky yarn, which actually works for so many different things when making gnomes. But I want to make some of this yarn orange because I'm going to use it for my girl gnome that's going to have braids. So I'll go ahead and dye these two things together. Now, this is really a fast, easy technique. You're going to be amazed. The first thing that I would suggest is make sure that you wear gloves because when you're using dye, it definitely gets into your fingers. And then use a metal bowl or a glass bowl. Now, I like to use unicorn spit, and I'll put a link down below if you're interested in getting unicorn spit, or really any acrylic paints will work. And I'm going to put about a cup of water, cup and a half, for this amount of fur and yarn that I'm going to dye. And then, as you can see, I don't have any particular measurement, but these the unicorn spit doesn't take a lot. This is probably 
less than a fourth of a cup of the unicorn spit or if you were going to use acrylic paint and put it in there. Now, the one thing that I will say is you need to mix it up pretty good because it'll kind of dye the fur splotchy in some places. It'll be more orange than others if you don't mix that up pretty good. And then look at how fancy this is. Oh yeah, this is a real hard thing to do. <laughs> okay, it's not hard at all. <laughs> all you have to do is just soak it up. And you do want to make sure that you don't miss any little tiny patches because when it's wet, you might not notice it as much, but after it dries, you definitely will see lines of still white compared to the orange and you don't want that. What I would suggest is saturate it the best that you can and then wring it out right over the bowl and then saturate it again just to make sure you didn't miss any little spots. And I can see there's a couple of little white spots there. So just do this twice. It's so fast, so easy, and it's so worth it in the long run to have it right. And I am so excited to be able to use orange to make an orange bearded gnome tomorrow during our live. So, and I'm actually going to have a guest with me, which is my husband. He's going to learn, he's going to make his very first gnome ever right along beside me. So I'm looking forward to it. And I'm also looking forward to seeing what you all think, hearing your comments. Okay, now I'm also going to use this really fat, lovely yarn, which I also picked up from Walmart. It has kind of a little bit of a silver little... I don't know what you call it, like little fringy things in right in with the yarn. And the beauty of this is the silver still shows up after the dye is dried. So the silver pops out through the orange. I'm just loving this so much. And this is going to make such cute braids. So I'm going to go ahead and when you are laying it out to dry, two things. Number one, you want to make sure that your fur is completely flat because the fabric underneath, if it's bent, it's hard to get that bendy look out of it. And then for the yarn, you just don't want it to be laying over the top of itself because it'll be, it'll be harder to dry if you do that. Now I laid these out on a towel to help absorb some of the water that might, if it's just too saturated, but then eventually I, I leave it for about a half an hour that way. And once the majority of whatever is going to drip off, drips off, if there's any, then I'm going to transform this over onto a cooling rack so that it can dry from the top and the bottom. I've also laid it in a bathtub, actually, so it can just drip down and that works too. But in this case, it's such small little pieces. I don't need to take up the bathtub to dry. And generally speaking, I let it dry overnight, but this one's drying pretty fast. After it is completely dry, that's when we will take the fabric and brush it out and it'll be soft and furry and a beautiful orange, just like we love. If you do not have time, to let it dry overnight, completely get dry, you actually can dry it with a hair dryer. Don't get it too close, but I even have it on high, hot speed or hot, the hottest air, and it didn't melt the fur at all. And it, it's not like lickety split fast, but it certainly is faster than going overnight. I think it took me about five minutes to get it dry. And then once it's dry, that is when you can start brushing it out. And once it's brushed out, it gets all soft and fluffy and wonderful. Now, for this particular uh, fur, I know that I'm making a beard for a gnome. So I, I kind of like that there's a little bit of white fur underneath the orange fur. It just looks more natural for a beard or, you know, kind of a little bit rustic for my leprechaun, which is perfect for what I'm doing here. Now, if I want the fur to be completely 100% no white underneath it, then I would cut how much water I used in half. 
So instead of a cup of water, I would use half a cup of water and then it will be a brighter orange. And I'll show you both of those in just a minute. But this is what it looks like for what I'm wanting, which is my leprechaun beard. Isn't that furry and fun and wonderful? Oh, I can't wait. And this is what it looks like if you use half the water. So a half a cup of water with a fourth of a cup of the unicorn spit. It's not all the way dry, but it's almost dry. And then once it's completely dry, I can brush it out and it'll be soft and fabulous. Well, now that we know how to dye fur, there are so many crafts and things that we can make together. I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate all of my subscribers. I have now passed the 5,000 mark. And I promised a long time ago that as soon as I hit 5,000, I would do a live stream. I'm a little nervous about that, but I'm gonna do it. So it's going to be tomorrow at seven o'clock. So Thursday at seven o'clock central time. I live in Omaha. So at seven o'clock Omaha time, I will be doing a live stream and I will teach you how to make a St. Patrick's Day gnome in a very simple, fun way. So come join me for the live. If you have any questions, you can ask me anything and I will see what I can do to answer your questions. So I hope to see you tomorrow. Yeah.